Bob Bowden, everybody. Hey, Bob, Bob, how how uh, how much is the pyramid now? It's a hundred thousand, right now. Hundred thousand, yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> now, Bob, you are. Let me put my credibility glasses on, Bob. You are in this place, which is your office which is a monument to all of these game shows. You're a legit game show fan. This isn't some, you know, like, you, you didn't see a business opportunity here. You have an abiding interest in this world of game shows, a I, love of game I, shows. I, I am still doing what I love. I'm so fortunate to still be producing game shows 45 years after I started in, in television. Oh, crazy. What was your first exposure to... A game show in person like did you go as a um uh you know as a fan as an audience member yeah. i mean or is that right i grew up in new york and there were still many game shows that were were taped in new york when i was a kid and uh i would go down into the city and get tickets for the different shows and i remember saying to my mom hey it, when i turn six i'm allowed to go to see password because it said minimum age six. So I said, when I go to, when I become six, can we see Password? So she took me to Password when I was six. And I'll never forget that day. Honestly, I remember looking at this incredible stage and hearing the sound effects and the music and watching the game. And I remember saying to my mom, this is what I want to do when I grow up. Wow. Uh, wow. Never and, look back. And around you, as I was kind of saying, is a piece of what is an enormous room that is filled with the kind of memorabilia from both your childhood and beyond. Meaning you have, I'll call them sort of relics from stage sets, from shows like this, from Password. Look, we're just showing a little wow. bit of the old Password. And you've got like the, you know, the original uh, Price is Right uh, platform where they're there for the showcase showdown, right? I mean, yep. you ha you've collected all of this through the years. Yes. I, I, you know, it, it, it started when I was working at CBS and they were retiring a game from The Price is Right. Uh, they were rebuilding it. It's, still, it's a game they still play. It's called Any Number. It was the first game they ever played on this new version. And they were going to toss the set in the trash. And I was working upstairs from where they taped. And I said, is there any chance that you could wheel that up to my office? I'd like to keep it. And they said, well, sure, we're just going to throw it out. So they they took it up to my office. And when I left the network, I took it with me. And that's what started my collection. And uh, <laughs> my collection includes all kinds of things that were headed for the dumpster that uh, I, I just felt a, a, a need to preserve and uh, now I'm a, a co-founder of the National Archives of Game Show History, uh, which will be a, a real place to preserve this uh, in a museum, uh, the Strong National Museum of Play in Rochester, New York. Um, they are dedicated to all things play uh, and everything in, in my collection in this room uh, will eventually go to, uh, to this archive so that future generations can enjoy it. That's the board right there. That's, That's it. That really is. I mean, yes. you're a that is, so Bowden has that in this big room, which is like a little mini museum to game <laughs> shows. Um, by the way, our ding is uh, which you may recognize, Bob Bowden. We ding oftentimes on this oh, yeah. show um, big SAT type words. So when somebody uses an SAT words, we'll we'll ding it, and yeah. um, that ding comes from. That's Family Feud, I believe. Yeah. Uh, no, the ding on Family Feud's a little different. It's, oh, uh, it's what is it? What What do you think this ding is then? That's more of like a Price is Right type of ding. Oh. Or a pyramid. It's actually more of a pyramid ding. It's uh, more of a pyramid ding, Tony. I always yeah, thought it was uh, Family Feud. Tony, that's a pyramid ding. The yeah. the, <laughs> the the Family Feud sound is known as the, yeah. that's known as the clang. Okay. So here, I. That's the, that's the, oh, clang. you're right. Yes. Yeah. yeah. The clang. That's wow. The clang. Look at you, yeah. man. Yeah. Um, yeah, don't all right, get Bob. Your things and your clangs mixed up, Mark. <laughs> it's really embarrassing. What a rookie mistake. Yeah. Um, so, so there has been this resurgence of game shows right now on primetime yeah. television and across the streaming universe as well. I wonder if you could 
just give us, I mean, you've been in television for so long as an executive, you know, running companies, also running all of these different games. Tell me if you would please, and running networks, but for that matter, over at Fox, um, tell me if you will, what's happening to television and then how game shows fit into that and why there's such a resurgence. Well, uh, in, in the broadest possible sense, uh, we're, we're living in a very turbulent time and game shows provide happy. Uh, they're, they're a place where you can escape. They're a place where you can interact with your television or whatever platform you watch them on. And uh, it, it's a place where you can be a part of the show, not just watch it, not just be a spectator, but you can guess the answers to the questions. You can guess the price of the items. Uh, you can enjoy the interaction that people have with each other on a relationship game show. Uh, th th there's no way you can watch a half hour family feud without yelling at your television set. It's <laughs> impossible. You can't do it. So uh, that, that I think helps people escape from, uh, you know, all the tough stuff that's going on in the world today. Uh, and then add on top of that, the, the strikes that we just endured uh, and the, the broadcast networks uh, in, in particular uh, needed additional programming. Game shows have always been appealing to programmers because they're cheaper than than most scripted programming, uh, certainly dramas and, and sitcoms. Uh, they can get up and running much faster. So, you know, you can when we, we did it, we did a show together called Greed uh, back in 99. And uh, we pitched that show at the end of August in 99. And uh, 10 weeks to the day we pitched it, it was on television. Oh, uh, yeah. Tony, find a little greed. That was a great show. It was a it was in the shadow of Millionaire. Yeah. And then it and then it but it 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 took off on its own. It felt very kind of intense like Millionaire. But yeah, um, it was it was no. in the era of, 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 of drama in game shows. You know, Millionaire really defined the new era of game shows with a big dramatic set and the lighting effects and the sound effects and uh, Greed and, and some other shows uh, came a little bit later, uh, but played off that same sort of um, emotional impact that game shows prior to that had not really had that much of. I'm curious, I'm gonna ask Bob in a second, but I'm curious in the chat, like what your favorite game show has been or is to the audience but i'll and i'll ask bob his favorite in a second i'm sure he loves all game shows but maybe he has a couple of favorites but um i'm also curious about something else you just re referred to which was the uh, there's a little piece of greed if those are watching on uh, youtube was hosted by chuck woolery and i did the uh, announce on the show which is really uh, it was really cool it was a very sort of intense and i you know you know tonight you know one contestant in one of them it was like from los angeles it was like one of those big reads um, the play along value, you talk about that yelling at the TV yep. game shows have to have that, right? Oh yes, absolutely. Uh, it, it's, it, it, if a game show comes on the air and you are merely watching it, it's probably not a great show. It's gotta be something that engages your viewing experience to a higher level where you're actually participating and whether it's. I wish I was on that show and I wish I could win the refrigerator or the car. Um, it's it, either that or it's just enjoying it. And, you know, if you think about uh, Jeopardy, there's a question about Jeopardy. Um, the one of the secrets of Jeopardy, which is is pretty well known in our business, is that, you know, people say Jeopardy. Oh, that's a really hard show. But not all of it is difficult. If you look at an, a, a column of, of, of a category of, of uh, clues, at the top, you're probably going to know the, the top couple of clues, and you're going to get it before the contestant. You're going to feel smart. And so you're going to say, oh, I know that, and yell it out. In the middle of the board, maybe you know it, maybe you don't. But when you hear it, you're going to say, oh, I knew that. Yeah, I really knew that. And then at the bottom, maybe it's too difficult and and you don't know it, but you learn it and then you tell someone, did you know that? And so it starts with, I know it, then it's, I knew that, then it's, I didn't know that. And all of that happens in every category on Jeopardy. And I think that's the secret to it, it being on for, uh, you know, more than 40 years now.
Uh, I don't know what this is. Um, I used to love remote control on MTV, though for the life of me, I can't actually remember the premise of it. <laughs> Heather says. Uh, that was a weird one. That was Ken Ober hosted it, and I think Jenny McCarthy was on it. And uh, no, she was uh, she was on Singled Out. A Singled but, Out, sorry, yeah, okay. But uh, it was yeah, it, MTV. it was a TV trivia game show, um, and and it it was a an homage to classic TV. There was a, a huge bobblehead of Bob Eubanks, uh, <laughs> I don't remember host that. of the Newlywed Game, um, and. Uh, it, you know, it was it was uh, a, a show that I think really appealed to not just the classic MTV viewer, which is, you know, younger people, teenagers and so forth, but also to their parents who would play along. And uh, it, it really it really helped define MTV in the early days. Mm, homage is a dang word. Sir. Uh, the Gong Show was the best show, uh, best game. Oh, there's remote control. Thank you. Good hustle. Whoever yeah. came up with the Jeopardy theme song needs star on Hollywood Walk of Fame, says Aussie. Who did, uh, who wrote the, uh, well, that, that was Merv Griffin, hmm. who, who, uh, invented the show. Uh, and in the original version, which was on NBC, uh, from 64 to 75, uh, that theme was only heard at the end during Final Jeopardy. When the show came back in the 80s, the current version, it became the main theme of the show, and it's still heard in the end game, almost in the precise uh, notes from the original. That's wild. This is a, uh, um, I like this, uh, the gong show was the best game show ever, says Phineas. I, I wanted to ask you about the gong show, because that was really just more of a party, it seemed, wasn't it? What was it? Yeah, it was it, it was a celebration of talent, but not all the talent was good talent. Uh, some of it was was bad and would get gonged. Some of it was so bad that it didn't get gonged uh, because <laughs> they were enjoying how bad it was. And it, it was from the from the uh, bizarre mind of Chuck Barris. There he is. Uh, who wanted it, it felt rebellious too, you know, like America's got talent, which is also a talent show, doesn't feel rebellious. I mean, it's got its own grandeur and you know, uh, coolness, but this felt rebellious. Maybe during a was that the 70s that Gong Show was on or 80s? Uh, late 70s, yeah. uh, but it, it was it was uh, in the in the style of Chuck Barris, who was rebellious in in other ways. He he created the dating game. Uh, which really uh, redefined daytime game shows and allowed uh, a, a lot of um, social mores like dating come out into the open and added a, a sort of a sexiness to uh, daytime programming that prior to that really wasn't a part of game shows. Uh, game shows were much more, you know, uh, traditional at that time, questions and answers and buzzers and bells and clangs because they're different you know um, <laughs> and uh, uh, then he did the newlywed game and the newlywed game was relatable to you know any couple that's in a relationship and 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 you were answering the questions along with the couples and and enjoying their answers um, so he what was know, the uh, uh, what is the date we're in now Bob as we kind of wrap up what give me a sense of like you you've kind of taken me through and I didn't even realize it at the time I was just sort of as a consumer of game shows you know you took us through the drama game shows the uh, yep. the fun game so where are we now with game shows there's as I say there's been this resurgence is there yeah. a genre specifically well uh, at last count I believe there are 25 first run game shows on television right now between daytime and prime time and that covers broadcast and cable and and, and streaming and uh, there's at least three more coming on in january that have been announced uh and uh i think game shows are now a fixture of prime time uh it used to be uh, you know after the scandal era in the 50s they sort of disappeared and after Millionaire came on in '99, um, there were there were little roller coaster trends of game shows. There were a lot, and then there weren't that many. But I think they're here to stay, uh, and they're they're cheaper to produce. They're easier to get up and running. They repeat very well, and they're relatable. Uh, they're they're really authentic, real TV. It is the 
the real foundation of reality television uh, is game shows. And many of the reality competition shows had their roots in game shows. Yeah. Uh, somebody was asking how the Price is Right to contestants are. They, they, they pick them right out of the line. They interview them. I have a, a story. I don't. We don't have time for it today, I don't think, but of uh, my friends being uh, pulled out of the line. But they, you know, when you're when you're interviewed and in, uh, any kind of casting for game shows, you want that enthusiasm. You have to have that. Otherwise, you know, you're not. They don't put a lot of duds on the air as contestants. Um, the um, a uh, question I have for you is about now your favorites. I mean, uh, we, we've talked about a bunch. What are your favorite uh, game shows, uh, both now and uh, through time? Well, my current favorite is Funny You Should Ask. Because <laughs> I produce it and it pays my mortgage. So, uh, and, and I, Right, I, of course. I, I let's, uh, let's leave out the stuff that you're involved with. Now. Oh, oh, well, then forget it. No, I, I, I no, of course. Funny should you should, so funny you should ask, and then what else? Right. And and a thank you to Byron Allen for making me a part of this and letting me follow my dream all these many years later. There it is. There's yeah. all we miss Louis. Miss um, Louis for sure. Oh, the yeah. pilot. Okay. Um, and uh, it, historically, uh, I, I'm a big fan of The Price Is Right because The Price Is Right to me is so much more than a game show. It's really a variety show, and there are over seventy games now that are in rotation um, that test people's knowledge of prizing uh, of prices and prizing. And uh, it's just, it's just such a wonderful adrenaline filled hour and uh, a, an old favorite that's back that I loved when I, when I worked on it and I love it even more now is press your luck, uh, press your luck. It's on ABC on Tuesday nights. Uh, it is just, it is a roller coaster of emotions it is so much fun to watch. The production values are very high. And it just, it looks great. It sounds great. Elizabeth Banks is an amazing host. And it's just, I just love every minute of it. I, I, I go to tapings when they're in town and I, I, I just can't get enough of Press Your Luck. I love it. There yeah, it is. It's terrific. Yeah, they brought it back. It was it was a hit. The first was it Peter Tamarkin who was the host the first time yes. Uh, around. Yes, yeah. very good. You get a clang for that. I got. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, no, Peter Tamarkin. We we all miss Peter, uh, but uh, the current version is just spectacular. It's it's so good. Well, I mean, it's 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 wild too to see uh, this new. Um, this new crop of of game shows come up and sort of the nostalgic game shows reemerge. I mean, there are cool new game shows um like the wall you know uh -huh. uh, i thought it was kind of cool um yep. and the, the sort of larger than life game shows but then as you bring back these franchises i thought the chase was pretty was, was fun um uh yeah uh, were you involved in the chase with the chase i, think, I was right? involved in the gsn version of the chase yeah yeah, yeah. it was good but anyway Wait. uh but then to see pressure luck and you know the the enduring aspects of, of jeopardy and family feud i mean these are just yeah. uh it's incredible well, and and wheel is just so solid you know you know you're talking the five legacy shows today are wheel of fortune jeopardy price is right let's make a deal and family feud and all of them have been on longer than 40 years several of them more than 50 years and these are formats that just will never go away. Uh, they will they will be on for our children, our grandchildren, our great grandchildren, and for many generations to come. Well, it's really cool to talk to you, Bob. I shot a video in Bob's office, which is kind of like a museum, and I'm going to push it to Tony, who will make it beautiful, and then we'll uh, we'll put it up as a separate video that so everybody who watches our channel, you'll get it dropped as a separate video. It will not air because it's just, it's sort of long, but Bob actually takes me through the office with all of these, it's, we only had time to do, you know, a fraction of what's there, but it's really cool. And uh, I just think you said it, there's something happy about game shows. There's something nostalgic. It, it just reminds us of a connection we felt and uh, it's a really special place to be working in. So I, uh, I congratulate you because to, still be you know rocking it for all of this time it's really great and your your work is really special so congratulations pal really nice thank you mark it's been great to work with you and and to do your show now and um the future is ours yeah come back and visit again bob um you remember uh hole in the wall i did hole in the wall hosted yeah, that a trophy that you oh. won oh the <laughs> look at that <laughs> hole in the wall
So Hole in the Wall, first of all, it was the biggest at the time, the biggest game show audience in game show history. 650 people were in the audience, Yeah, which was, I don't know if you needed that, but that was the kind of thing. It was like an arena kind of thing. Yeah. And these walls came at the contestants, right, Bob? And they were cutouts. Yeah. Yeah. It was a cutout in a different shape every time. And the contestants had to configure their bodies to fit within the cutout. Uh, and uh, some of them were pretty easy. And then as the show progressed, it got more and more difficult and you had to contort yourself. And it was uh, it was a really fun spectacle because if you failed, you got pushed into a pool of water. Yeah, the wall would hit you and you'd just get pushed into this big pool of water. It was pretty yeah. great. And they were all wearing these tight silver suits, as I recall. Um, <laughs> But the, my note for it was some of the walls, as they were revealed, I thought, there's just no way that person can make it through. Like, you have to make it doable, I thought. That was my yeah. one flaw with the show, I felt. Yeah. I mean, yeah. um, like, you can see how you get caught on it and <laughs> and you go into the water. So, yeah, yeah I hosted that show with Brooke Burns, uh -huh. um, who's very talented, and I think hosted a show, hosted I a show now. Brooke Burns. I did, I did the chase with her. Yeah, she's really great. So I had so much fun with her, and uh, and that was a fun show. But that was a show I did. I don't think I've hosted. I don't know. I hosted a bunch of stuff, the Knievel jumps and all the rest. But um, but for pure game, I think that was it. <laughs> a hole in the wall, and it was uh... the the line. There you go. They made it through. Yeah, uh, it's time to face the hole. I remember was the uh, signature yeah. line on the show. Yeah. How long did that show air? Oh, here's the sad part. Okay, I told you it was a sad story. Uh, so they were going to hold it off. It was going to premiere after American Idol, which would have, I think, just uh, catapulted it into the stratosphere, potentially anyway. I mean, it's not a bad yeah. place to be, right? But another show called Wipeout, which I think is still on, was doing so well. And it was, again, a big physical show that they rushed it onto the schedule. And because you rush a show onto the schedule, there's no promotion. There's no buildup. I mean, we, yeah. you know, it was crazy. I was literally, we've got to get the show on. Wipeout's so hot, and we have our own Wipeout. So they rushed it onto the schedule, no promotion. I remember the game in the East, an NFL game, it's premiered on a Sunday night. Yeah. Um, it ran late, I think, Bob, right? And then, so the yeah. East only saw part of the show. <laughs> yeah. And then yeah. It, it just it just died. It just, it Aww. was just sad. And then they just burn off the other ones. So how long I did like it last? The way mm. Yeah, it yeah. fell into a hole. <laughs> <laughs> I like Come the way their butts look in the silver everybody. suits, though. That's funny. <laughs> How, yeah, how about a clang and a ding for Bob Bowden? All right, Bob, thanks, pal. Thanks for reliving my misery. Appreciate thanks it. Playing. Hi, it's Mark, and I thought that was great. Hit the notification bell. You'll know whenever there's a new video being dropped, and please subscribe to our channel to help us save the universe.